That's right. Country boys make do, baby. Yee, yee. City boys learn sex ed. Country boys make do. My name is Jeremy. What I love about being in the country is being in that bubble of people that you know and you care about. Oh my God, that is not how you spell that. My man said, my name is Jerry May. One of the misconceptions is people in the city think that people in the country are like less educated. When I hear city teens, I think of party people. My name is Mandy, I am from LA, and I love it because of the character. One second you're seeing someone, a model, walking down the sidewalk, the next a homeless man is peeing on the ground. When I hear country teen, I just assume they kind of just don't have a lot of experience with people from different walks of life. In the city, I've always felt included. I've always had a friend group and people to relate to. Step forward if you agree. City teens are bitchier than country teens. Bitchier. Well, of course city teens are more bitchier than, sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> of course city teens are more bitchier than um, country teens because you guys have so much more to deal with. It's just kind of a rule out of safety where you don't even make eye contact with anyone because then you're putting yourself at risk because there's unfortunately a lot more bad people that are willing to do bad things in the city. Bro, the only difference between country folk and city folk is that the country folk are like kind of nice to your face, but they're just as ruthless and brutal. And also nice to your face if you are, of course, you know, hot for the most part. Okay. But like the people in cities are just dickheads regardless. Okay. They're just like dickheads. On the outside, on the inside, that's just how it is. Actually, I would even go so far as to say city folks sometimes are even nicer. Can they disagree a step forward? I want to say I'm a... Wait, what is this? Six Gen Z versus one secret millennial? Odd one out? This is the Hasanabi story, dude. Selfless person. I'm a nice person. Except it's not a secret that I'm a millennial. However, you know, I have that bitchy side. Me coming out as like a bitch is now just me making sure you know who I am and how I am going to run my things. In the city, like even just driving, everyone else is so like selfish and self-important where they're getting where they want to be even if they're putting other people in danger. I almost had a heart attack this morning when so many cars, like especially like in the city, they'll just cut you off. Yeah. The drivers, they don't care at all. So I'm like, okay, so that's No, you didn't watch this already. You watched this with XQC probably, and you think you watched it with me. Dude, 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 dude. listen, dude. Uh, I lived in uh, level, dude. Level, big country, dude. Okay, there you go. Is that, does that ring a bell, dude? Is, does that, does that sound like... Listen, l listen, dude. It's normal. People learn more practical life skills in the country. I grew up in a huge family of like eight siblings and we've always lived on a farm and I've had a lot of like life skills. Like now I know about plumbing and like water tanks and different things that I can now use. I don't know why, but all the country teens give good vibes. Like they seem super chill in like my adulthood. Like now that I'm not living at home, my, my hometown specifically, the upstate South Carolina is considered like industrial. So we like have a Jeremy May's a barb though. And he definitely canceled me, but also, you know, still seems chill. Okay. But like definitely a barb definitely runs a stand account. Definitely called me, uh, you know, a honky cracker and a racist, but still chill. A lot of factories so they teach you a lot of very practical hands-on skills woodwork auto parts auto body in my opinion AAA is not going to help you yeah. in the country yeah. you have to learn how to i had to learn to change my tire multiple times before i actually I fully don't understood know how it. to change my tire <laughs> i've never done it once uh, in my I, life my my dad makes sure we i keep a jack in my car just in case of that would you say it's more encouraged for you to do more of that trade stuff that you learn or do they encourage you to say hey feel free to go out into the city and learn the technology they give you the option <laughs> but going learn, learn the technology bro 
Bro, he lives in South Carolina, dude. Like, he's not. <laughs> hey, you. You country folk. You know, why don't you drive your. Why don't you drive your horse into town? Like, he's not, he doesn't live off the grid, dude. He knows what Jubilee is. Look at his drip. Going into the workforce was always a good option for people who maybe couldn't have afforded it in X, Y, Z. And so. He's like, this is an abacus, okay? This is a, a way to do arithmetic. Like that. Yeah, personally, I've decided not to go to college at this moment, even though I graduated this past year. And I feel like I have enough skills to the point where I could get like jobs that don't require a four-year degree. A big part of practical life school is like human interaction. And I think in the city, you have a lot of opportunities to meet a lot of diverse people, um, different kinds of people. You have um, the ability to network. Well, would you consider that social skills or practical skills? Um, I think social skills are, um, definitely are a practical skill. But I feel like in the city. That's <laughs> pretty good. He says, stop shitting on mobile viewers is hurtful. That was funny. Good job, Slosh T. It's funny. You had to have waited for that joke, right? But like maybe like two minutes at least, because you are a mobile viewer. You learn some. You learn skills that are also equally useful to living in the city. They're just not the same ones, right? Like one thing I think I think about a lot is Uber. Everyone in the city knows that if if something doesn't work out, something goes wrong. There's always an Uber. Assuming you have money, there's always like an option. Someone you. Can Do they think that like? People in South Carolina don't know what a fucking Uber is, dude. I'm losing my mind right now. What is happening, bro? First of all, that's not a practical life skill. The least you could have said is like, at least when you're in the city, you learn like the routes, the bus routes, or you have a good understanding of how to get from point A to point B quickly. Whereas like, because of a lack of public transport, uh, adequate public transportation, in uh, rural areas, like, you don't get to learn that sort of stuff, and you only know how to fucking drive from place to place. But, like, they still know what Uber is. You can contact. Whereas if you're in, I mean, the middle of nowhere, there's not going to be an Uber, period. Moving to Charlotte was definitely a culture shock for me. I didn't know how to use a parking meter. <laughs> I charged myself four times on a parking meter because I didn't know how to use it. Would you consider that a practical skill? That's the question, right? Because what is a practical skill Ex in now society? Is right. it knowing how to use a parking meter? Okay, I take it back. Jeremy literally lives in like bum podunk nowhere. Never mind. How the f what town doesn't have a parking meter, bro? Like I've been to places in Oklahoma with like 50 people living in it in towns that are like super desolate and they still had like some kind of parking meter. <laughs> like, that's odd like, to think about, right? Exactly. When I moved there, I just didn't know, and that's why I refused to even go towards the city limits. <laughs> I had sex education in school. Every single year of my sex- of my Damn, sex Americans get hella sex ed, dude. I didn't have sex education in school, but I grew up in Turkey. Sex education. We had to sign an abstinence vow in our books. We Okay, well, there you go. Actually had a teacher get written up because she taught the girls we sex already ed saw class in the how beginning. to put on a condom. I think the importance that schools place on sex education is extremely lacking. Why aren't we worried about um, how good of people we're gonna be? Because sex education also includes, um, you know, sexual assault. Like once we um, put our mindset into, we need to educate on things, not just science, math, reading. Um, that's how you create better students. That's how you create better people. My parents. Bro. Sex education, absent is only sex education, should not be called sex education. It's maybe like, it's like the opposite of an education, you know what I mean? You're literally like, telling people the wrong thing. And there is no sex in it, even. <clears throat> it's sex miseducation. Yeah, it's like... There's no sex and there's no education. Why are they even, why is that even a part of the program? Parents wanted to like have me learn it from them because my family's like very Christian that everyone has a different view of how they think about sex. So I think sometimes it's important to have like parents teach that to kids. I don't know if it should solely be on schools, which I don't think it should, but the problem is a lot of parents won't. 
as a woman, we're not taught a lot about our anatomy and our health as much as we should. Um, I was diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, with periods and that kind of stuff. We're not taught like what's normal, what's not normal. We're just taught you have one. I got hospitalized because of my condition because I didn't know about it. I wasn't taught about it. And I feel like there's more to sex education than just intercourse. People in the city have access to better education. Where I'm from, it was very underdeveloped. 30 minutes away, there was private schools. There's always a private school with the better education, better funding. And we were having to have teachers travel just because of how horrible our conditions were at my school. And these kids will go to Ivy League colleges where I'm going to community. I think there's a lot more of um, a requirement to be educated in the city. If you don't get like a certain quality of education, like your, your options are just not gonna be good enough to afford a lot of the lifestyles that people live in the city. Where I'm from, it's the workforce, blue collars. We're the people who provide for, for the rest of America. So if we can find a job without our education, that's more important because that's what's putting food on the table. Why are we gonna break our bank if we're just, if we can find a job without one? What? Bro, that's like kind of at the heart of the problem, right? There's an area in South Carolina called the Corridor of Shame. Education is so bad there. Bro, this kid's dad is 100% is high up in some sort of financial firm. The school that I went to, basically, like, there was a lot less people there, and there was more help for people that needed it, and, like, one-on-one -on -one time with teachers. So I would say, like, that's the reason I've seen a lot of, like, country schools having higher, like, test scores and all that stuff. The high school that I go to, it's heavily funded. There was one time I did go to an inner city school, and I was like, whoa, like, this is different. They don't have what we have. Like, I hate to bring this up, but like, you know, sometimes when you go to those inner city schools, who do you see the most in those schools? And that's when it comes into the race factor. It's been seen in history that more black and Hispanic schools, they often are less funded than these PWIs. Do you think that's because of their race or because of just where those people tend to live? Like we can start a whole entire conversation about redlining yeah. and how mm -hmm. they're, all pack there and somehow they always end up to have the least funded schools but that's a whole entire other conversation i have a diverse group of friends i have a lot of people who don't view the world that i do who are not christian who are atheist stuff like that so i think it's important to have those friends because like as a christian you're called not to just like be in a bubble and not just be friends with people that agree with you because that's just an echo chamber that doesn't do us any good i would say it's like always a great opportunity to be able to learn new things from new people and um, really expand yourselves i would say my main group though is mostly asian american because that's where i find common ground with people um, it's about what you have in common sometimes what you don't have in common I think friends are a luxury. I've never had a set group of friends growing up. I've always been the weird homo in the background. Um, I was that token friend. I was the token gay. And it was never, I wanted to hang out. I just wanted you as my arm candy at school. Always the white girls just never, never want to hang out with me in public and always want to hang out with me in front of their friends. My like, my friends are just the people I see at work or the people I just kind of, I'm kind of around because I know my boyfriend has a, has a big friend group and I'm just around them. I know I'm never gonna feel like I fit in. It's just that one insecurity that I know I'm never gonna find that friend group that is gonna stick with me forever. I feel safe where I live. I'm a tall white dude. At least that's what, that's what people see. And like that's a huge security in the city and I know I have friends who are not tall, not white, not dudes. So like changing all those three factors determines kind of where you feel safe and has a lot more to do with like me rather than just like my area or the city itself. Yeah, personally, like growing up on a farm and predominantly in the city or in the country, there's not very many like dangers. Like you can just be home alone at like age 10. No one's really gonna like bother you. A lot of people. Rule is safer to be honest. We never locked the door growing up. Dude, I don't know how people say that, dude. Like, I feel significantly more safe because I have, like, neighbors and shit. You know what I mean? I And then I'll go to, like, 
areas outside of like Los Angeles. And it's like, there's one house for like a mile. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, dude, this is crazy. If someone came and wanted to murder me, if I lived here, like no one would know. People wouldn't know for a week. Okay. In my case, people would know immediately because I wouldn't be live at like 11 AM the next day. And then they'd be like, oh, he's dead. He's not tweeting. He's not Instagram storying. He must be dead. Someone called the police immediately. But like in every other circumstance, I feel like, you know, you got no neighbors. Animals are a bigger threat than people out there and animals aren't that dangerous. People have guns. So if people are not scared of other people, it's more like natural disasters or like animals or different things like that. I was talking with some of my family members and they were like, oh, now that you live like by yourself in the country, maybe you should get something like bear spray because that's more of a threat than someone like coming to the house and like trying to rob us. Yeah, uh, I carry around a personal alarm with me wherever I go. I keep it in my bag because I want to be able to pop it open and We'll alert everyone around me to be like, hey, I'm small and I might go missing. Like, I feel what? the need to have those things. Oh, what? Did you say an arm? Is she saying I'm armed and dangerous right now? Fortunately, and it sucks that I do. I know someone brought up guns um, in the countryside. For me in the city, guns are scary, not protection because if someone has a gun in the city they're not protecting you <laughs> they're likely gonna shoot you i i had a school shooting in by my neighborhood um so it's definitely something where you know it's hard to feel safe even going to school you know in the country you rarely ever hear things happen like that like i guess it's just a luxury that we have in the country you can just walk around maybe go on a late night jog or whatever you know things that you can't really do in the city I want to switch lives with the other side. Um, I've She's right though. Like, first of all, concealed carry permits in cities like Los Angeles are very difficult to come by. And not only that, but statistically speaking, having a gun uh, has a higher likelihood of escalating the situation to a violent confrontation, often where the gun will be used. Like guns are, they're, like, if you want one for home protection, it's one thing. Even then, it's like, whatever. But if you are going to fucking have it on you at all times and think that it's going to protect you, like, no, it's not. It's going to get stolen. And then they're going to, people are going to use it in a crime. You know what I mean? I'm not walking outside with an AA-12. My CCW permit cost me two hours of class time and 15 minutes at the ring. Cost me $50. Seeing what it's like to be in the city. And I feel like, especially in the city, there's like way more opportunities. Um, I really wanted to get, to get into, you know, acting and stuff like that. Like in Texas, you don't really see that much of that. There's always something going on in the city, which is great, but it also means, and there's always all kinds of different people but it'd be nice to like spend some time just being in the country and figuring like stuff out for myself. I feel like I'm like literally the opposite of you. <laughs> I, I want to change the pace. I want mine to be faster. You want yours to be slower. That's 100% not true. I've been concealed carrying my Springfield Hellcat for the last two years as a law, as law enforcement. Wait, what? What the f is a Springfield Hellcat? And bro, are you lost? Did you just compare like being a, a, a cop to like the average person is that even the only hellcat i know is a car oh it's this it's a polymer fl frame striker fired micro compact semi-automatic pistol sold in the united states by springfield armory manufactured in croatia by hs product Is the most popular handgun currently on the market, really? Main thing I 
have learned from watching him. I don't contradict the song. What? <laughs> I'm actually surprised that there's a there's a law enforcement person in here. Must be new though. When I was a kid, I've always wanted to like live in New York City and do that whole thing and do like fashion. But obviously, like everyone's opinions change and what they want to do changes. Don't nuts lose their shit over it because it holds 16 rounds, but it's almost as small as a phone. Oh, nice. Hellcat micro compact handguns. The world's highest capacity micro compact. Looks cute, bro. It's cute. Kind of weird to want a micro penis gun, but hey, you know, do you, I guess. Me, I'm different. I got a bird 50 cal, brother. That's that's what I use for home defense. I like to shoot a hole through my neighbor a block down the street's wall. Murderous dog. So I know personally, I want to end up in the country and just like live on land or live somewhere that's very peaceful and like not super busy. I personally love city life. Like I love city life so much that I went from LA to New York City, which is. I have a CCW license in Texas. It was stupid easy to get. First of all, you don't even need it anymore. So, you know, that's just a piece of paper now, brother. You literally do not need a concealed carry uh, permit in the state of Texas anymore, so. Also, the best CCW gun to carry isn't a Glock or a Hellcat. It's a Sigsar P365XL. Very compact, but fits in your waist and doesn't print. <laughs> Even more city than LA. I did live in Georgia for a little under half of my life, but just from personal experience, um, as like a minority, um, we tend to be less accepted where there's less of us. And what, when I lived in Georgia, there weren't a lot of Asian people. Um, when I was a kid, like I would overhear people making fun of my mom's accent, my dad's accent about how they spoke to compare to where I live now. And those things don't happen as often. I love my quiet life. I love living on the outskirts. I love just not having to worry about much, but my bills. To me, success and happiness don't go together. If that's me living just where I am, what I'm doing right at this moment, that's okay. It was interesting to me with you guys both being minorities in the countryside, just seeing how you experienced being in the country, because I think it's a stereotype that, you know, there's a lot of people that are ignorant and bigoted in the country rather than the city, it's more accepting. I feel like we, all of us are more on the same wavelength than I think our parents had with, you know, people from different walks of life. Like if we were to meet again, the word country wouldn't come to my mind at all. Like at, at any point, it would just be like, you know, peers. Oh <laughs> <laughs> he's meaner to a 14 month subscriber than the cops. Yeah, because the cop is in here, probably new in here, easier to learn. Maybe I can change his mind, change his perspective. 14 month sub has been in here for such a long period of time that like, you know, if you're saying dumbass shit, like I expect the cop to say dumbass shit. He's a cop. 14 month subscriber, you've been in here long enough that you should know better. Be mean to me, I'm dissing your city. I don't care. Yeah, whatever. LA's not a real city. You got it, dude. Who cares, brother? It's 83 degrees and sunny right now. Like, I don't give a fuck, dude. October 15th, and it's 83 fucking degrees out right now. You think I give a shit? Awesome. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>